Hello, everyone. This is Jimmy Cultist, back again with another stealth video. I've prepared some assets. Today we're going to be talking about hacking into doors or something of that nature. I'm going to explain a few quick tips about creating these assets. If you're going to create a door, I highly advise that you angle the camera this way. So that the mirror is clipped down the center and you can sculpt both sides of the door however you want. Then when you've got the door ready, with whatever shape or pattern or paint job you want, just go to Live Clone, Copy and Swap. That's L1 and R2. Anyway, that should do it. It should be nice. And we're going to go ahead and group these together. Make sure they are labeled scenery. I've already done this, but uh, you want to make sure you do that as well. That way the puppet can interact with them properly. Then we're going to put the microchip right down here. And we're going to stamp out a timeline for the door opening. A node and a counter. Connect the counter to the node and the node to the timeline. Set it to play once, although sustain will work. Just make sure you don't set it to loop. That's the main thing. Stamp out a keyframe. Set it to linear. Copy it out. L1 and R2. Now scope into our sculpt and just move this a tiny bit, not too much. Copy out the linear keyframe. This is a little extra tip. It'll make it look nicer. Then duplicate it a third time. Record another animation with the doors fully open. And duplicate it once more and set it to change, uh, keep changes, I should say. Also, you might want to lengthen the distance out a bit so it's a nice gradual open. But I'll show you what putting that little, that little anti-animation anti in there does. Kind of has this brief moment where the door buckles as if it's unlocking. A nice little tip for anyone making doors, for a sci-fi game, or anything else you might be making. That's why I was so specific with that animation. Alright, well now that we have our door animation, let's go ahead and go over to this other thing which I've created. Basically what I've got here is a sculpt a square sculpt, or a rectangle. And I've got some kaleidoscope I've got some kaleidoscope holes cut in it, although I did turn off mirror. And I've got one big hole in the center. And we've got this little combination lock, which uh, is attached with a bolt to an invisible piece of material, and the reason why I did this is so it would be easy to slide it around and reuse it if I wanted to. Because if it was bolted down to this, you know, I, if I wanted to change its position, it would be really difficult. We've also got these paint flecks. These little uh, red paint flecks that are going to act as the lights, you know. On the lock. And we've got it all grouped together as one solid entity in case we want to, you know, again, reposition it. And this bolt is a motor bolt. 
It's not exactly 100% straight. It's a little bit crooked. But I think it works well enough. You can see it's spinning there. All right. Just wanted to give you a quick slowdown on what I did to create that. I also carved a little groove in this sculpt so that we would know, you know, where the dial is pointing. I'm not sure any door has ever used a lock like that. It's kind of sci-fi stuff. You know how it is. Now we're going to stamp down another microchip. Also, we're going to call this one lock just to be neat. And this one we're going to call controls. And we're going to stamp out another one in here. And that one we're going to call com Nation. Then we're going to take out a controller sensor. One of these lovely things. And we're going to set it to remote controllable. And that should do nicely. Make sure to delete all the wire pathways leading out of it because we won't really need any of them. And then we stamp this down. Actually, probably won't need this just yet. Then again, maybe we should do it. We're going to make this um, pathway. Stamp out a node. I don't know if I need to label it, I'll just make it blue, but basically it counts for X. Then we're going to take two more, two more nodes, and make them white. Or just one, actually. We'll take one node, make it white. And we're going to go to the D-pad over here. Directional buttons, stick it in there. And we're going to zoom in on our little wheel here, or scope in, that is. L1 and X to scope in. And we only want to do it once, though. We just want to be inside this group that we've created. We're going to go ahead and stick a little microchip in here. We're going to label this Use. And we're going to have a nice little trigger zone. We're going to set it to Tag. And we're going to label it Unlock. And I think a cylinder will do nicely, although we're going to want it to be a lot smaller. No need to have it that big. And I think that's all we're going to need. We might also need a timeline. So it's a play once. Connect a node to it. And take out a knot gate to prevent playback. Go ahead and stick this on there. Make sure it's in the right position still. It is. That's good. And we're going to take out a switch. And all this is going to do is prevent playback. And we're going to go ahead and take our X output we set up earlier and connect it to the node. 
You can see it's working. And now that that's done, we're going to go ahead and go in here. Stamp out a keyframe. And I want you to double tap with X on all the objects. Also, preview invisibility. So we have this entire lot selected. But let's just go ahead and tap X on the things we don't want, because mainly we're just trying to select these paint flecks all at once. The reason being is we're going to make some alterations to their color and make them green. And the reason why that we're doing them all at once is I intend to make several other keyframes for each individual one turning green. But having a master keyframe with that already recorded is easy. I'll show you why. Now we're just going to stamp out a switch five of them to be exact. One, two, three, four, five. Five nodes to go along with that. One, two, three, four, five. And now that we've got that all done with. I might make them... I don't know why, but I really want to make the nodes white. Just to contrast against the counter. Now we're going to copy out our master keyframe. And we're going to start with this top light. Press triangle on all these lights you don't want to be green. This is a lot easier than us individually scoping into them and opening their tweak menus and messing around with them. Just to have this master keyframe. Now we're going to copy it out again. And this time we're going to press triangle on all the lights except for this second one here. We're going clockwise around the circuit. Copy it out again, and now we're going to leave all lights except the third one. And we're just going to continue this process so on and so on until we have all of the lights, you know, their individual colors selected. Just press triangle on all of them except for number four. Move it down there. And lastly, we're coming to number five. Just a little uh, time-saving tip for you all. Excellent stuff. And now we're going to want a system to turn them on, of course. And earlier we set up a zone, so now all we need is a tag labeled unlock. And when the zone detects the tag, it'll send an output message that'll increase the count. Now, since, since this is the first one, we're going to have to put the tag here first lock that is. Then we're going to copy it and put another one over here. And then a third one down there. Fourth one there and a fifth one here now that should do nicely I also want to add a little sound effect for when we're selecting these I want a little click sound so I'm gonna to go to mechanisms and movement
This will tell us when we're pressing X. Next. I want to put a camera in here. We're going to set it to cut. Hide imp. And we're just going to be looking at this, you know. We might as well put out another microchip for this, just in case we have to move it. This is just going to be all the necessary things. I guess we could call it... Um, parameters. We're also going to need a little handy-dandy... Player teller. A tag, that is. It's going to react with the player's teleporter that we put on him earlier. That's in this chip. And we're going to want him facing the right direction with Y up and Z facing the terminal. Let's go ahead and turn off some of these things, preview invisibility. Also turn off seeing bolts because you can sometimes accidentally grab bolts and rearrange them and we don't want that. Yeah, that will do nicely. We probably won't be needing this master keyframe, but just in case we do, we'll keep it around. And that, now what do we need? Oh yes, we're gonna go in here. Stamp out this. All this is gonna be, well actually don't connect the node to the power, that's not necessary. Basically all this operates as is we're going to be splitting the output of the D-pad for the purposes of left and right are the buttons we're going to want left and right on the D-pad that is we're going to want those to turn the wheel right and left when we're changing the combination Make sure if you put this in a game that you always tell the players how it's done. Because, uh, you know, which buttons to press, because otherwise they might be a little confused. You could also use the imp to turn it. But this is uh, approximately how fast we're probably going to want it. 20% speed. And if we're in here, we should be able to toggle it right and left. That's about right, although we will want to switch inputs because currently left goes right and right goes left. We don't really want it reversed or inverted like that. Oh, another thing we're going to want is our player. We don't want him to move around, so we're going to need to take advantage of some logic we set up earlier. A wireless transmitter. Make it uh, in scene. And stop is what we're translating, so just put stop right here. And uh, I'm just going to go over here quickly and show you. I believe it's in tags. Yes, we have stop hooked up to a keyframe that makes it so our puppet can't move. We shut off the puppet interface. And it's all dealt with nicely. Alright, seems to be working. We will want it so that you can actually, you know, activate this. So we're going to go to our interaction chip that we used earlier for our locker and for our camera terminal. And we're going to go ahead and copy it. And move it right over here. 
then we're going to stamp out a nice big old um, selector. Take B, stick it in the power to controls. And connect this tag's output, the use tag, to B. Take A and stick it in the power of interaction. That means that when we change from A to B, we'll automatically have the prompt turned off and you won't see it still displayed. Let's make sure the tags are in the right positions. Yeah, those are good. We will want this interaction display to probably be a little larger. Also, we might move the tags in the middle just so there's good positioning for interaction. So, let's go ahead and take a look at this. We'll also want an option to help you leave if you want to, because... So we'll just stick the circle output into A, and that should make us leave. Also made us climb into a box, that's interesting. I'm not sure how that happened. Is there something where we universally climb into a box every time? Well, I must have forgotten to set something. Inbox. Yes, I probably forgot to set... I would want something so that you can only get in a box when, you know, when it's available, when it's possible. We'll just go ahead and shut this off for now. I'm... do... there is probably something you would want, though. You would want, like, a trigger zone hooked up to this node's power so that when you're near the box, you can use it and you could label the box something, or you could add a tag to the box that the zone could detect so that you wouldn't be just jumping into the box randomly. But for now, we're not going to deal with that because it's not really our intention. Oh, we're still getting in the box somehow. How is that possible? Is this it? Is this where we're getting in? Well, that seems to be something else. Just gonna go in here real quick and see how we're able to do this. I guess if we go to circle, we'll find the source of our Yeah, how is that even possible? This node is turned off. How can we be jumping into the box? Okay. It's probably just the zone. When we connected the zone to this power, the zone was probably detecting something anyway, because it was set to default. Anyway, we, we took out that problem for now. Oh yes, let's press leave real quick. Now if you don't like the way the camera exits, you could possibly have a system set up. Have this set to play once. Connect it to the timeline, and then we'll just put a little, little switch on the timeline. It goes into A. If you just want to have a camera, a more, you know, that camera movement's a little awkward zooming out the way it did. So 
Just have a thin camera, pull it out to here. Let's see how this goes. Hey, that's a little less awkward there. Anyway. Now all we need is a methodology so that when we activate all of the locks, the door will open. And for that, we're going to need a AND gate, which basically requires that all of its ports be active for it to send a signal. You may be very familiar with this concept if you've ever played LBP. They basically have the same logic in LBP, and in many regards, it's pretty similar to Dreams. Then we're just going to take the output from the AND gate, stick it right here in the counter, and let's go ahead and just open up the door. Now we will probably also want one other thing though. You probably do want the door to have a camera, you know, or a cutscene of some sort that plays. And I also think it would be a good idea to have a knot gate stuck in the selector. And the reason why you want this is because you want it so that once your door is activated and open, you don't have to, uh, you know. Oh, and this is actually a good place where our master selector will come in handy, because once we shut off this, none of these chips will be working and the lights will default to red. But if we take our master keyframe where they're all green, and just hook this up right here, we'll account for that. Now let's go ahead and set our camera position. Make sure you disable controller sensor input, because you probably don't want to be moving around while this cutscene's playing. And set it to cut. Disable imps. Yes, it's all good. I think we could probably go in and interact with the door now. Perfect. Everything works like magic. You can't interact with the lock anymore, which is just the way we want it. The doors are open now. Nice, smooth opening. I probably could use a sound effect, but uh, I figure you know how to do that by now. Just place a si sound effect on the timeline. Maybe I'll do that real quick, just because it's neat. We'll go to starts and stops. And we'll put this right here. And we'll just add this little uh, loop right here, except we're going to set it to sustain. And we're going to turn off the uh, auto 3D panning. And pull it to about here. Go back to... And we'll have a piston stop for when it reaches the end of its animation. Turn the sound down a little bit. And let's just go ahead and open up the door to sample our sound effects. That's pretty good. Well. I hope you found this helpful. We're going to give a quick shout out to our monthly supporters on Coffee. There they go. There are their wonderful names. And in the meantime, 
If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to ring the notification bell so you never miss another video. If you wish to support our earnest insanity, you can check the links in the description to donate or buy merch. Until next time, goodbye.